Okay, well, good morning, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Alistair, and I'm going to be talking to you a little bit today about using JSX Graph from F Sharp, a functional presentation EDSL for end users. So this is basically about um, creating an interface from the F Sharp functional language uh, to JSX Graph uh, in the form of an embedded domain specific language. Okay, so just a bit about me. Well, I've been a Dutton programmer for quite a long time. I'm currently studying economics in the University of London. And because of because of that, you know, I'm really interested right now in open source mathematical computing and just basically anything that can make my life as a student uh, easier. So of course students are naturally lazy. So that's basically what motivates me about this presentation. <laughs> okay. So uh just talking about Sylvester. So the, the Sylvester is a F sharp embedded domain specific language, an EDSL for mathematical computing. Okay, um, the goal of Sylvester really is just to provide a, a unified uh, syntax annotation for all the different aspects of mathematics, from the symbolic, the logical, and the visual. Um, today, the software for mathematical computing, um, it's split between, basically, there are like two general categories. You have uh, computer algorithm systems like Maxima, and you also have theorem provers like Lean, and, you know, but I mean, that's really split between these aspects. And of course, well, for visualization, it, you know, there are libraries of visualization, but there's a real split between these categories of software for mathematical computing. So what Sylvester tries to do is it tries to unify these different aspects under a single EDSL. So what it does is it provides syntax, well, F sharp is a statically typed language. So Sylvester provides syntax uh, types, uh, different properties, operations, for basically for modeling and expressing uh, theorems, diagrams, operations, all the different kinds of activities that you can do uh, from the different mathematical domains. And it tries to provide a unified functional language interface to different open source libraries. So of course, JSX Graph, but also computer algebra systems like Maxima, uh, theorem provers, uh, latex renderers, so basically all these different libraries that you have today for doing mathematical computing. Sylvester tries to provide an integrated interface to these libraries. And we'll see how we can use these libraries uh, in the demo. So, and like I said, so as I said, from as, as a student, I mean, you know, I would like to have a, a single language and a single environment for doing the stuff that I need to do at the university level courses. So that, that's really one, a big motivation for using Sylvester. Okay, and well, just briefly, I mean, why another, yet another computer programming language? Well, I mean, today, the way that, that mathematics is taught today you know, it's fundamentally not dissimilar from how it was done hundreds of years ago. I mean, of course, there are some differences, but the thing is, computers and software, even though they, they have these like really exponential like numeric capabilities, I mean, it, it's not really like a fundamental part of how students learn mathematics today. Okay, you do, I mean, you, you don't need a computer to you know to learn mathematics, to learn mathematics, I mean, which is either a good thing or a bad thing, you know, depending how you look at it, but. Uh, what I would really like to do with Sylvester is to try to, to just to exploit these capabilities of, of computers for doing symbolic operations, uh, logical operations, visualization, uh, just to make it like an everyday part of, of, of what students do. Okay, so just a little bit about F sharp. Uh, F sharp is a hybrid, a functional first object based language from Microsoft. Uh, it's called object based as opposed to object oriented because object-oriented doesn't describe the entire thing. So yes, it has classes, it has classes, has inheritance, um, interfaces, polymorphism, things like that. But it's also a hybrid with functional programming, a functional programming metaphor. So it's a member of the ML family. So um, basically with functional languages, you have this kind of divide, you have like languages like Haskell, and then you have uh, the ML family, which has OCaml. So F sharp is a member of the OCaml, and the, all these members of the ML family have like a similar syntax. Now, F sharp can run in different environments, can run in a desktop IDE, can run in a web browser, and can actually run in a Jupyter notebook. So this no so this presentation is being done from a Jupyter notebook right now, which is a really cool way to, to present and to do demos and stuff. Um, because of the, you know, these capabilities, it's using different areas, uh, financial programming. Of course, you know, that, that's really important now with, with, with um like, Companies like Jane Street, for instance, are very heavily into OCaml. And also what's becoming more popular is web development also. And it has features uh, compared to like a statically type programming language like C Sharp or Java. 
it does actually contain features that make it easier to, to use it interactively and to interoperate with languages like JavaScript. So F Sharp is a really, really good choice for building the type of language that Sylvester tries to be. I will see how, how we can you know, exploit Sylvester basically to, to do these sorts of mathematical operations. Okay, just, just about terminology. Well, on EDSL, uh, it, it just tries to exploit the syntax of, of the, the host language and while also adding domain specific elements. And one of the things with EDSL is that the integration with the host language is very deep. It, it goes beyond just simply adding, just simply adding types. I mean, you're also adding, you know, uh, operators, and you're also sometimes repurposing the, the syntax. So we actually see how basically we, how we, we introduce a custom compiler to compile F sharp into JavaScript. So that's why it's termed uh, embedded in a specific language. Okay, so uh, let me get started with this. Just, I'm just going to show you how uh, Sylvester can be used for if you're studying economics, how you can really use Sylvester to help you. Okay, so that's a, that's a like really, really basic about the theory. So economics, it, ha it deals with like how a society allocates scarce resources. Okay, um, you know, we have scarce resources, we can't always get what we want. So we have to decide, well, what do we produce? Who do we produce it for? What, what labor are we going to use to produce it? Okay, and the, the ba really basic terms in economics are supply, demand, consumer, preference, utility, firm. I mean, these are just like, like really, and I mean, it's a really, really simple definition of, of these things. And so the introductory theory in economics only uses basic algebra and calculus, right? It, that, that's really just, just the basic that, that it uses. And you can go really far with that. Uh, but one thing about economics is that economics it features really, really heavily with algebraic manipulation and also graphs and visualization. So I don't know how many of you have actually looked at any economics at all, but I think the first thing that sticks out is like, oh, wow, it's a lot of graphs. And these are a lot, this is a lot of like symbolic manipulation that you have for this. So that, that's really why, why you know Sylvester comes in and tries to, to help with that. Okay, and just the definitions that are going to be used from this, this, this particular textbook. Um, it's a really good textbook that, that introduces like rigorous calculus with microeconomics. So okay, so uh, let's get started with the demo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring open up Sylvester. Okay, and I'm going to break in the open up the Sylvester namespace. I'm going to declare a function of one real variable. So that's basically, this is, this is just the syntax for declaring a function of one real variable. Okay, so that's my function. And then, well, something I, simple thing I can do is just evaluate that function at a particular point. So I can evaluate it at nine. So that's the result. Now, the thing about Sylvester is that all operations in Sylvester are fully symbolic. So when we evaluate things, we get back a symbolic, we get back a symbolic expression. Uh, if we want a numeric expression, well, we just use a, a operator to convert the symbolic expression to a numeric expression. This is just the so this is just the computation of a numeric expression, a simplification of this here. Okay, so basic calculus. Well, we can differentiate. Okay, uh, we can integrate. And so we can look at a function. This is a function of two variables. So we're looking at function of one variable. Now this is just a function of two variables. And we can do pretty much the same thing. We can differentiate it. So we can create a partial differential. I differentiate this function with respect to x. Okay, so this is just really, 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 really straightforward. Okay, now one thing with Sylvester, Sylvester uses the maxima cast. So everything that we do in Sylvester, it comes from maxima. Okay, so this is just, it just keeps a log of what maxima is doing. So in the background, Sylvester uses maxima. Okay, so just a basic outline of just one part of economics, supply and demand. So in the theory, um, the quantity of a good that consumers are going to demand, uh, it, it, it's just it's just basically it, we think of it like as a function of the price. So at a particular price, consumers are going to want to buy this particular good. And similarly for supply, for a particular price, firms are going to want to supply this good. Okay, so and we can. Usually we just consider just linear, if we consider linear supply and demand function. Okay, so how do we express these concepts in Sylvester? All right, so let me bring in my macroeconomics module. I can define two real variables, P and Q. I'm going to define three real constants. Okay, so these this represents the price of sugar, price of chocolate, and the consumer income. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a demand function for coffee. This is just a simple real function of one variable. This is our function. And 
what we can do is we can fix the constants we just defined. Well, we can just fix the value at a particular point and just create a demand function from that. So when we fix those values, so when you have PS as 0.2, the price of sugar is 0.2, and then consumer income is 35, well, 35 dollars, really, just say 35, then we get this expression here. This is a really simple expression. So we can create this, we can create a, a supply. So this, so what you're doing here, this is a, so before you saw a demand function, this is the supply function. So this is from the supply side. So that's basically the, the same, the same thing that, that we did. So, okay, we fix the value of the, the price of cocoa and we create another function. Okay, and we can just find, okay, well, what's the, you can just say, okay, what's the quantity supplied for a particular price? But this isn't really, this isn't really, isn't really very interesting. We're more interested, okay, how does the, how the what, what does the supply function look like as we go from through all the different values of of, of the, the price. And that's where graphs come in. So here's where we're going to draw. Here's where we're going to draw a graph. Okay, so here is where we're using GSX graph. So this is this is a, a GSX graph rendering of two uh two plots. We have our supply function and we have our demand function. Okay, and what we did is um when we are drawing GSX graph, we pass some properties to it. So we have the title for the x-axis. It is quantity, the white title is price, the color of the plot is red. And so all the different properties that, that we put into the graph, we pass it as properties in F sharp and we draw the graph like this. Okay, and just something that the convention in economics basically is to have uh, the, the dependent variable, the price be on the vertical axis. So it's kind of visible, it's not really important, but just, just, keep, just keep, keep that in mind. Okay, so we can, what we can do is we can, cal so we can use the vessel, we can calculate where these curves intersect. So they intersect at that point, and then we can draw the graph again, putting in that point. So we see it okay here. So this is what's, what that point the point is called the market equilibrium, uh, at that point where the price is, is equal to, to this point. So that, so that, this is just one way that we can have like really, really basic um, visualization uh, and basically operating on these economic concepts in Sylvester. So another quick thing we can look at quickly is just, uh, just production mm -hmm. and cost functions. So production a production function just simply says, okay, what's the relationship between, say, two input variables, say, labor and capital, and the quantity of output that a firm can produce? Okay, so we, it just, let's say let's just assume we have this function Q. It's a function of L and K. L is labor, K is capital. Now, if we differentiate that with respect to the variable L, uh, what we would get is what is called the marginal product of labor. And this is just the change in output from using an extra unit of labor, holding all the other factors constant, right? So this is just a simple taking the basic definition from calculus and plugging it into economics. And well, the average product of labor is just, we divide, it's the ratio of the number of workers. So we just divide the production function by the value L. Okay, so let's look at how we can express those things in Sylvester. So let's get two more, uh, well, we we find it's P and Q really. So we we'll just add two more variables, L and Q, and also we want to add some symbolic constants. And we we uh, we're using Matjax to render uh, these values in LaTeX. So that's one library that we use in Sylvester. So this is our production function. So you see, it's just a simple uh, cubic function. Okay, and we can just so again we can just fix the value. Of, so let's say we fix the value of, of K bar. Uh, the the this particular production. So what I'm doing is we're holding one value of k constant uh, for what was called the, the short run. Okay, so I can just draw that with k bar ranging from k bar is fixed, I can just draw that. Okay, so this is the curve, this is the curve of a short run production function. Now, the most interesting thing about this is that uh, as production, as like the production increase, basically there's a point, there, there's a point where the, the actual quantities as you use more and more, as you use more and more labor, there's a point where the quantity actually begin to go down. And that's a phenomenon called the mar diminishing marginal return. So what happens is, you know, in, in any workplace, it doesn't, you know, the saying too many cooks spoil the broth. As you add more workers, a productivity doesn't necessarily increase, it can decrease. And that's actually, actually a, a universal law for, for anything. So the production function models that, that as you add workers up to a point, you're going to start hurting your, your productivity. Okay, so this is just an example of how we're basically expressing these concepts in Sylvester. Okay, so we want to define we want to define another function. So this is a function of one variable where we're fixing k bar at 10. So this is a function of one variable. 
and we can calculate the marginal product. Remember, we said marginal product of labor is, is just if you add have a, a, how much it will cost to produce an extra unit. Okay, and so we can calculate the average product of labor, just dividing this, just dividing this particular production function by L. Okay, so now we can just, again, you can use GSX graph and we can draw this. Oh, sorry, I didn't need to find this. There we go. Yep. So what we're seeing is we're seeing the average product, average uh, product of labor and the marginal product of labor. And again, we're talking about productivity. So what happens is uh, as you increase labor, um, there's going to come a point where basically your, your efficiency is going to start to decrease. Right? And that, that's what these graphs, that's what these graphs are showing. So graphs are really, really important in economics. Okay. Um, so we were talking about long run and short run. So in the long run, typically you have a production function of two variables. In the short run, you hold one constant. And like we saw just we have one function. So one long run function we consider is a Cobb Douglas function. So this function has a has particular form. Okay, so this is just the so this is the, the Cobb Douglas, what's called the Cobb Douglas production function. And we can calculate again, calculate the marginal product of labor. Okay, so that's just that's just the expression for the MPL. Uh, we can just get basically if we plug in L values of L and K, what would we get? Okay, so we can fix so again, we can fix the values of A, alpha, and beta to particular value. And what we can do is in Sylvester, we can define functions implicitly. So we can what we can say is okay, if we set our Cobb Douglas function to six. Okay, so we're setting this to six. Now, what we can say is we can define a production function and put saying, okay, if I set this to six, that's how I want to define my production function. And I can draw this production function now. So what we get is, so this particular, this kind of curve is what's called an isoquant. Okay, here we're holding the quantity produced at six. And this basically just, just shows you basically of the two factors, L and K. So this just shows you what that particular, if, we, if the production is fixed, how the values of labor and capital are going to vary. So this type of curve is called isoquant. So in Sylvester, we have a built-in function to produce isoquants. So this, this I'm saying, I want to draw using GSS graph isoquants for production at six, nine, and 12. Okay, so these are my isoquants, and I just have a, a point, I just have one point on, on it. They're just showing you basically where that if particular production, where that particular point is on the tree curves. Okay, so this is basically how we're using uh, GSX graph to model these concepts in economics. And I thought the, just the uh, another concept from this called the, the MRTF, which is always negative because the, the curves, the isoquants, they're downward sloping. Okay, so this, this particular value is always negative. So you can see yeah, this is always good because K is positive, L is positive, alpha is positive, beta is positive. Okay, and so just look quickly at uh, another type of economic function called a cost function. So the cost function basically says, uh, if I'm producing a certain unit, how much is it going to cost me to, to produce that? So C is the cost. Okay, so let's just say that this is our cost function. So what we can do is we can set C to, we can set Q to zero. And what we would get is this is the fixed cost. So no matter what happens, we must have, have this cost. Right? So that, that when we set that Q to value, this particular function is called the, the fixed cost. Okay, and the marginal cost is say, okay, for additional units of output, how much is the cost going to go up? Okay, so like I said, marginal I found basically everywhere in economics. It's a really, really important concept. Okay, so we can just draw draw these curves. And again, so we see basically we, we can just look at the behavior of cost. So we can see like at a point, the, you can see that the, the, the costs are basically the, the cost sort of like the, the increase is very, very flat. But as you get to a particular point, it becomes more and more expensive. To produce certain things, so you know that's the thing. That the cost is not linear; it's not a linear thing. You can't just this. It doesn't just simply say to produce ten items, it's going to cost twice as much as producing five items, right? So that's what we know, and that's that's something that we know from this from life. Okay, so we looked at basically we looked at how we looked at how Sylvester uh, uses GSX graph and all these different open source libraries to work with concepts in economics. So I just want to talk about how. Sylvester is actually using GSX graph under the hood. Okay, so, uh, so, so we saw how we use GSX graph to basically to draw these different graphs. And the, but the thing about this is that we're not using GSX, uh, the GSX graph 
objects, the geometry elements, like for example, like function graphs, uh, we're not actually using those in the EDSL syntax. What we're doing is we have these functions and we have these fully defined mathematical domain objects. And that's what we're using to draw. And what we do is when we draw those functions in the draw command, we set properties on this, set certain properties at a very high level. And those properties are what are basically configured. Those are, those are what configure uh, the, this, the GSS graph visualization. Okay, so I just simply how okay, well, how does all this happen? Well, so let's interpret with JSX graph using uh, uh, the fun script F sharp to JavaScript compiler. This is a simple example. This is just some F sharp code. Yeah, this is just standard F sharp code. But using fun script, I can actually compile this into JavaScript. This is just JavaScript code here. Okay, so uh, what basically what Sylvester does is it takes these statically typed F sharp bindings. So what happens is JSX graph has a type trip definition file. So what uh, Silas says, it takes those bindings, it takes those, that definition and it creates F sharp bindings, statically type F sharp bindings to the different JSX graph types using those bindings. And it uses that as a starting point, basically for this a low level interface to JSX graph. Okay, and when the when the notebook, the Jupyter panel sees F sharp code in a quotation with particular type, it knows, okay, I need to compile this code into JavaScript and display this code. So we can see this here. So this is this is F sharp code that's using the low level GSX graph interface. Okay, so you can see we're using geometry elements like well, points and we also have our board, we have points, circles, intersection. So if I execute this, okay, so I get my, uh, this is so typical, you know, uh, GSX graph and we have all the interactivity. So basically, so any, I mean, anything that you can do in GSX graph in JavaScript, are you able to do from F sharp uh, using this, this particular interface, All right? So that's that's just the, the low level interface, um, but and it's designed to provide this fine grain access because we want to use this table. And so if you need to use like really highly detailed and customized visualization, you can use that low level interface. But I mean, this isn't really, you know, it's, it's not that suitable for like doing like everyday stuff like what we were doing before. You know, if you're a student, well, you're just, inter you're just interested in, in like, you know, with your working with your mathematical objects, okay? So this is how uh, you draw like a, a function graph using the, the low level interface. So we're all familiar with this, you know, using sliders and things like that. Okay, but the high level interface is this data, that's really where, so what we do is we build a high level interface and we use so that draw command. That's what we're using to, to draw, basically draw all these visualizations. I want to design this to be really fast and easy to use. So we saw that all those properties are very high level. Okay, so let's look at like, for example, so for linear algebra. Okay, we can define like a vector. This is how we define a vector in Sylvester. And then to draw this vector, so we use the draw command, we set different properties like the ranges, and we say, okay, if I want to use a slider, I want to set the range of x between one and nine. So if I draw this, what I will get is a JSX graph, and I have my sliders that I can use to interact with my diagram. But this is all coming from a very high level interface into JSX graph. Okay, so just I mean, just talking about like comparisons with other languages, you know, things that to consider. Okay, well, look, how easy is the code to understand, especially like users? Because I mean, if you're talking about you know students, professors, educators, they are necessarily computer programmers. So you want you know, so if you're targeting those users. Having something that's easy to understand and grasp, that's probably re that's really important, you know, compared to necessarily not necessarily like, like capabilities or, or how featureful it is. I mean, things like 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 help users avoid mistakes, like for example, so types, um, you know, using a cyclic type language, you know, you get a lot of help with, with how you're supposed to support a particular function. But the most important thing is how can we reuse it? Okay, can you create these high-level interfaces from a lower from these lower level types, like what we saw basically using the, the draw command? Uh, to build up this this JSX graph uh, function graph, so you know how is, is it still, how is, is it that to do? And of course, well, can it be used interactively? So can it be used? So for example, JavaScript, for instance, um, it's not really like an interactive language. So this is just, just this is just JSX graph um JavaScript code. But I mean, to use this in a notebook is not really straightforward. It's, JavaScript isn't designed to be used interactively by a user, and we have well, languages like Metapost. Uh, but I mean, metaphors, if you look at this, I mean, the, the syntax of this is actually pretty, I mean, it's pretty intimidating, you know, so I mean, for, for an educator, an end user, they don't necessarily, you know, 
might be cut off, might be turned off by this. And of course, there's there's mathematical. So this is math. This is a mathematical. Because this is actually mathematical doing an economic function. And we can see the same thing as modeling the supply and demand function. It has a slider. But the thing mathematical is that it doesn't have any real capabilities for reusing the code. And if you want to put your code in a library, if you want to build like high level interfaces, I mean, I, I don't know what, but I just find the mathematical code to be very, very difficult to, to use. Um, I, I find languages like, like FSharp to be much, much easier than this. Okay, so uh, that's it for me. So I hope you enjoyed my talk. And for more information, you can check out the GitHub project, uh, Alice to be Sylvester, or you can ping me on Twitter at Alice to be. Okay, so that's my talk, and thank you very much.